emotional night. Home Team Heroes, presented by Sobeys, Canada's family grocery store. Well, it's my roots, you know. I was born and raised here. I really enjoy coming back. When they say you're, you're going home, I, I know that I'm, I'm coming to a place I've had so many great memories. They say you can take the boy from the country, but you can't take the country from the boy. I think, and there's a lot of truth to that. Morning, ladies. Hello. Morning. Once again, Willie O'Ree has returned to Fredericton, the place where his journey started, the community that made him who he is. I played a lot of pond hockey. I never played in an indoor rink until I was 15. There were about four outdoor rinks uh, within 10 minutes walk from where, where, from where I lived. And uh, you'd play until it got dark and then put the lights on. But the parents always knew where their, their children were. Willie and I have been friends since I would say about the time I was 12, he was 14. Long ways from shooting pucks up my head in your community. <laughs> Everything he ever did, he had to be as good as anybody who ever done that job. And that was just kind of what made him unique to anybody else, as far as I'm concerned. In this city, O'Ree's achievements have long been a source of pride. On January 18, 1958, O'Ree stepped onto the ice with the Boston Bruins at the Montreal Forum, becoming the first player to break the NHL's color barrier. What about your career? Where are you from? Are you? Well, I'm from Fredericton, New Brunswick, mm -hmm. and I played most of my hockey there, my uh, minor hockey, and then I turned pro and uh, signed a pro contact with uh, Punch Emla. When a small community produces an NHL player, it's a big deal, and to me, what makes Willie special is he hasn't changed. He's the same kid that grew up in Fredericton. It's a chance for Smith of Boston, a shot, Manny Eagle made the save, another try, they made the score! O'Ree was looked to be the last one to touch it. O'Ree would play 45 games with the Bruins and play professional hockey for more than 20 years. Back home, friends always knew he was destined to be someone special. I used to travel to the various cities where he would play just to see him. I'd take his father and his brother and, and a couple more of my friends and we'd go to Quebec or Springfield, Mass when he was in that league. When they said that there was a chance he was going to get sent up to the National Hockey League, I was over there with his mother. We were so excited, I can't tell you what it was like. I feel the same way pretty much today. To me, uh, playing hockey was just something that I just uh, didn't uh, want to do. I just feel I just was compelled to do it. I just uh, had to play the game. Over time, Willie's fame would spread beyond Fredericton's borders. O'Ree has become an icon celebrated across hockey. But there was one honor that always eluded him. I've written a few stories about Willie, just kind of chronicling his career. We really started to get some momentum going to the Hall of Fame push just after the 60th anniversary celebrations in Boston. I was chatting with him on the phone and I said, Willie, there's a story in the Gleaner and they think you should be in the Hockey Hall of Fame. Brenda thought I was already in the Hall of Fame. And when she found out that uh, I wasn't, then uh, she, you know, she took it upon herself and then David and uh, a lot of the Fredericton uh, people and friends and, and uh, family that they were, gonna, they were gonna make it happen. What uh, evolved was a 76 page uh, public submission with support from people like uh, Joel Ward and Wayne Simmons and uh, Carl Subban. Uh, PK's father, and we fired it off to the Hockey Hall of Fame, and the selection committee took it from there. Well, the day of the selection, we had a small group assembled at our house awaiting the result, and that result would come directly in a phone call from Willie. I called Brenda. I said, Brenda, it's Willie O'Ree. Yes? You know, I just wanted to let you know that uh, I'm going to be uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame. And when I said that, and then Brenda says, oh, she jumped up and was saying, uh, oh, well, he's, gonna, he's going into the Hall of Fame. He's going into the Hall of Fame. Tonight, O'Ree is being honored with a screening of a documentary about his life story, simply titled, Willie. It's a homecoming fit for a hero. 
Fredericton was just an unbelievable support system and incubator for, for the greatness that Willie became. He didn't grow up having to think about what he couldn't do. You know, the town made it so that he could thought about, could think about what he could do. And he, he ran with that. This is worth a million dollars, you know that? <laughs> I think our town adores Willie O'Ree. They respect and admire him for what he has been able to accomplish. But more than that, I think they're touched by the fact he keeps coming home. And I think there's an immense sense of pride because no matter where Willie O'Ree lives, his home is in Fredericton. Home Team Heroes, presented by Sobeys, Canada's family grocery store.